further away. All right, y'all, what's going on? This is the Premier Sports Betting Show, the Primetime Angles, live on IG, and this is a Prime Wave Media production. All right, so you guys already know what time it is. It is opening day in college football, opening weekend to be exact. I call it kickoff uh Kickoff Saturday here, but th you got to understand, we don't have the better teams here. This is more like uh, mid-majors going against a lot of FCS schools today. So don't get yourself all uh, worked up in a bunch. These games are kind of meant to be kind of crazy in a sense today as well, too. So you got to be thinking thinking smart today, okay? You, you got to be thinking smart. That's, what, that's all my whole thing is, you know what I mean? So pretty much, man, last night. Let's go ahead. I'll break it down for you guys. My article will be out later this afternoon. I got a little uh, tied up last night. I couldn't finish it up, but it will be out later today. But the state of the Lakers, man, um, pretty much the Lakers, dude, last night, they just got outplayed. And didn't we? Then I sell y'all on the show. That's why we took plus four in the first half with the Rockets. And I told you guys that literally the Lakers were going to come in there flat because they had way too many days of rest. And I and, and that's exactly what happened. And so pretty much, you know, the 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 Lakers, you know, they they cruising, you know, they trying to get get it all together and everything like that. And then you got a Rockets team that is still, you know, got that adrenaline pumping from the other night of where their season almost ended as well, too. So pretty much that was a bad storm for the Lakers last night. And it happens, man. That is the NBA playoffs. But the sick thing is the top seed, all three, except for the Clippers, the top seeds in the playoffs all lost first round. Uh, both one seeds lost, and come on, the Bucks are on their way out. And man, the Bucks have man, they burnt up way too much money, bro, in this series. And I knew I liked Miami a whole lot more, but I was playing the NBA politics game, and you know, it seemed like the Bucks are good to cover games and things of that nature. But they weren't able to do that. They were, they've just been done. They just, you know what? It is what it is. The Bucks have one player. And the Heat went ahead and exposed that. Everybody else is our good, good teammates. He's having the same issues LeBron James had in Cleveland the first time around. The first time around. When you start getting so damn good that everybody just starts spectating and just watching what you do. And that's what happened. And Giannis has only got two moves. And so pretty much, you know, he's getting figured out. And I've told people this for a long time. He has a robotic game because he didn't play in America. You know what I mean? And he didn't grow up in America. If he'd have played high school basketball in America, his game could be a little bit more polished. But he was such a freak and so good at what he does. They just push you ahead. You know what I mean? It's like a kid that, you know, excels at stuff, but he just never really was able to learn from the other children. So, you know... And that makes sense as well, too. No home court advantage. They can't really do the bubble thing. But they had the best chemistry out of anybody in the Eastern Conference. And that's actually has diminished uh, since this series. Is seen. You, uh, it, they look like a really dejected team at this point. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Florida's in the house. My boy AP, what's going on? And I know my man. And Y'all already know what it is, though, man. Which cause? So let's go ahead, jump into it. We got a nice little room filling up and everything like that. So, man, I hope everybody's ready for the weekend because I definitely am ready for the weekend, my damn self. So, well, I, uh, you know, we should have been ready for the weekend yesterday. Today, we are already here for the weekend. So, here we are. WNBA bets, uh, okay? So, in the WNBA, we're going to go ahead and in the first game, we're going to take the over here, uh, Sun Fever. And um, both these teams uh, had, tend to go over in their games a lot. You have the Sun, who have went over in their games eight eight times, eight out of their uh, 18 games, um, eight, nine, and one to be exact. And then you have the Fever, who are nine and eight um, in their 17 games, going over and under and everything like that. So pretty much, and when I say nine and eight, I'm meaning, okay, the nine is for the over and the um, eight is for the under in those type of games. So it's not a win-loss situation, okay? So pretty much, um, 
I like the over 161. It's very hittable in this game. The Sun been scoring a good amount of points. The Fever seem very, very desperate to get themselves a win. So I know that they're going to be all in today. So over 161, let's see how it shakes out. And then we got the Aces going against the Dream today. Last time the Aces and Dream played, the uh, they went down to the wire. And the Dream almost... Uh, Wound up winning that game, but what happened that day was, you know, the Aces came back, came up, and were able to do their thing. I think the Aces learned from that lesson that day. And you know what? They already learned their lesson the other day when they dropped that surprising game. And, um, you know, pretty much what they're going to do today is they're going to take this one very, very seriously. So pretty much I'm going to go ahead and take the Aces today. I think they win this game by 12 or better. I'm not saying that the Dream aren't going to be there, but it seems like the Dream play really bad after a win, okay? So that's where I'm going off of, and I know a lot of people have the plus 10 on Dream today. They think the Dream will be that team, but nah, not today. I think the Aces will wind up being the salty favorite and go ahead and get a big win today. And then we got the Liberty and the Mercury. We all know the Liberty are the worst team in the league, 2-15, and, and this team is 11-7 and seven uh, when it comes to over and unders, and actually have dropped their last uh, four of them. So pretty much um, the Mercury are another team that goes over a lot as well, too. But today, with the way the Liberty's offense has been playing lately, come on, they scored like, I think it was, I only think they got past 50 points in their last game. I looked up in the third quarter, they had 45 points. They had an eight-point quarter the other day. I know that usually that means that you're going to step it up, but I don't see that because their trend has been going under the lately so pretty much i think what the mercury do here they probably do get out to a big lead and they're going to play some really good defense today but you know what don't be scared of that 12 and a half on the uh liberty the liberty seem to be a good double digit dog um um they seem to be a really good double digit dog um against the spread you know what i mean they're, they're worth the investment that's what what i'm pretty much saying so yeah and we've seen this this year they've actually came up as their biggest dog days against some of the better teams in the league their two wins aren't against scrubs in this league they they beat the good teams so pretty much you know you already know if they still had their little number one draft pick kobe's little uh uh, star player and everything like that they probably would have been able to win a couple more games this year but you know they were always going to be a bad team so pretty much that's it with that and we're going to go ahead and move on but WNBA today six to one and also last night we did hit that six to one ticket in the WNBA last night so I hope that you guys tell that bad boy and um, took it on home and we're actually doing fairly well in the uh, WNBA as well too over the last few days so those tickets are cashing out pretty nice um, and we almost swept the NBA last night too we only missed it because the Lakers stopped scoring in the second half 42 second half points you ain't gonna win no series that way all right so we move on and we got the MLB primetime pick six you already know the the big ticket my but my odds are still better than the lotto so up first we got the Padres and the A's we got a good pitchers duel going up there in the town today and it's going to be uh the Padres big hoss uh up there uh Chris Paddock and we're going to have Sean Mania pitching for the A's today and I really do feel like what happens here is um, the Padres figure out a way to win this game, but this is a huge game. This could possibly, possibly, and this sounds crazy right now, but this is a crazy baseball season. Just think of this, the A's and the Padres, two of the most, two of the kind of whatever, you know, overlooked teams in the state of California, because a lot, you know, a lot of times the Angels and Giants take up a lot of the headlines and things of that nature, and the Padres and A's have to be really, really good for people to go ahead and really jump on them and things like that, so, and the Angels as well, too, but the Padres and A's have really been the story this year, in my uh, opinion. You know, the Dodgers were going to do what the Dodgers were going to do. But this could be a possible World Series matchup. It sounds crazy right now, but, hey, we're playing in a, one of the most unpredictable baseball seasons ever. And this is one of probably the game of the day between any league, interleague or divisional, whatever it wants to be. And so pretty much Padres, money line minus 110, and it's a split on each side. So it's literally a pick em game. So let's see how it shakes out. Padres, money line minus 110. Shouts out to Fresno as well, too. My boy Javi's in the room right now. J Trev, 559. Y'all make sure I give him a follow as well, too. That's my dog right there. All right, so um, we got the Rays. Minus one and a half today going against their rivals from the um, 
from up the way. Because Tampa's more south than uh, Miami, I'm thinking, right? Um, so pretty much um, here we are, one and a half with the Rays. They got Blake Snell on the mound. They actually, and it's actually a little chalky too. It's minus 130, but the minus 130 is telling me that we should lock this bad boy in and get get that ticket cash because they should be better than um, two and a half runs today as well too. So maybe you might want to go ahead and alter alt line this a little bit and bump them up to a two and a half and say, hey, may, maybe they went by three runs or better. But here we are with the minus one and a half. That's what we got right here for the parlay. And uh, let's go ahead and get this win by two runs and move on from there. All right, so we got the Pirates in the Reds. We got Del Shafini going against um, – Damn, I'm trying to think of the Pirates pitcher right now. I had him, I had him marked down, but um, they got a pretty good matchup going today. The Pirates are actually a slim dog today, and they, you know, pretty much stepped it up yesterday. They got us a good win. They got us. A, they were one of our dogs of the day this week as well too. Came through, and um, you know, Pirates Reds. This has overwritten all over to me because both these pitchers tend to get hit and get hit very well as too so i got the over nine with the pirates and the reds right now and then we got the under nine and a half with the nats and the braves max fried on the mound for the braves today so i really truly feel like this game these guys have been seeing a lot of each other and i know that they're gonna, yeah thank you thom uh, uh pirates today so sorry about that thank you thom but don't worry though guys once we get into the studio we're working on all that right now i'm cleaning that that we getting that place uh cleaned up and everything like that situated properly so then we can be looking real good so then maybe i can have my stat boy uh there with me as well too so uh pretty much uh it is what it is and we have the under nine and a half nats braves i really do like that a lot and then we got the rockies tonight the rockies let us down did they not we had ourselves a lead and i know everybody was feeling like all right pop on the right side tonight hell yeah we got the plus 205 let's roll here's one of friday nights at the ravine nope dodgers wasn't having it they wasn't having it the dodgers man them hitters boy i'm telling you if 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 you got a pitcher in there that is very suspect be ready to lose that's all i can say when it comes to the dodgers man you better have your bullpen sharp in the uh postseason boy because they only gave him 60 games this season. That might have been a that might have been the best thing possible for the Dodgers right now, to where they didn't have to play 162 games, man. Um, no, we haven't did NBA yet, sir. No, Pifedo, you, you good? We and we wasn't gonna go back to the NBA if we started with it anyway. That means you gotta watch the snippet, brother. <laughs> D backs plus 110. No, but don't worry. No, we haven't done NBA yet. We haven't talked about college football yet. I did it in reverse. I did WNBA first, and then um, we brought this to the primetime pick six in. So then we can make sure that, um, yeah. And so pretty much, thank you, moment. You already know, brother. Um, so pretty much there it is with the MLB primetime pick six. I love, I love it. I got security up in this piece too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We coming of age, baby. We coming of age up here, boy. I love it. Thanks, Thaw. Thanks, Mommy. Y'all, see, I, I, true soldiers right there, baby. True soldiers. We bought it up in this bitch. <laughs> but yeah, that's a 46 to 1 ticket right there. We got D backs money line um, at the end of the day as well, too. Love that. Um, I almost skipped the angle because I'm over here get, getting too goofy. So pretty much D-backs money line plus 110. Reason being Madison Bumgarner's return back to the Bay today. And I think he has a huge game against his old team. And um, let's see how it shakes out. And, you know, the Diamondbacks want to be the spoiler right now. Both these teams are shooting for a playoff spot, uh, if you didn't know that. All right, so we got the MLB dog pick four, 65 to 1. We got the Royals in the uh, the Royals money line today, and this is the trick shot running uh, money line today. I know we got going against Giolito with this one, but oh well, oh well. Um, 
Give me the Royals because the Royals have been good against some of the better pitchers in the league, man. So give me that plus 195, and that's what we're going to do from here, and we move on. And then we got the Orioles today. They're going against Garrett Cole. I'm trying to take down the big boys today. So give me plus 210 on the Orioles today. And you know what? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. Let me bet back the Phillies today because the Phillies looked good yesterday, and they got us some money yesterday as well, too. They wasn't our dog of the day, but it's all right. And then, um, you know what? I'm going to go with the most trustworthy dog of them all over the last week or so and that's going to be the uh detroit tigers today the tigers will be our dog of the day so mark that down the uh tigers will be the dog of the day today so there it is with the uh dog pick four big value on the dog pick four today and this ticket is very hittable because you have to understand the royals and orioles are getting little to no money today because a lot of people are going to be all over the pitching matchup and everything like that that's a uh bona fide one and a half uh uh, bet for a lot of cappers and a lot of different people who think that they're really sharp but this is when those bets work against you dude especially on a saturday so let's go ahead see how it shakes out 65 to 1 and now it's time to go ahead and talk about the pig skin college football kickoff bets let's go we got eastern kentucky going against marshall today eastern kentucky actually finished up five and seven and five last year they were one of the better fcs schools in their in their division and conference and all that good stuff so you know what i know marshall is pretty good marshall handles their business against the smaller schools and everything like that but uh, Eastern Kentucky, a school that's not too far away from West Virginia, you know that there's some animosity here, and you know that they're going to want to prove some some things because their program's gotten better. They had a winning season last year, so pretty much I'm taking a plus 24 Eastern Kentucky. Let's see how it shakes out, and then with our dog of the day, the dog of the week in the um, NCAA, and that's going to be the Middle Tennessee State University, the boys over at uh, Murfreesboro. So pretty much in uh, MTSU plus 150. This is going to be a toughie, but it's okay. We don't know what Army team is coming. Uh, Army always is going to show us who they are literally in the first few games of the season. And you know one thing, game probably will go under as well too. So if you you feeling a little, little, little weak about this bet, then no problem. Just go ahead and play the over under or just go play the other side if you really like Army a lot. But I think I'm going with the dog. I feel the values there. So let's see how it shakes out. Let's get that money, man. Plus 150. Dog bet of the week. All right. So we got SMU. And you know what? This is a ultimate, ultimate first half play as well, too. So I would say ultimate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just be dead honest with you. I think SMU wins by 40. You know how you know how bad they beat up on bad teams last year and really like made them look bad. This offense was highly potent. They went ten and two. They were one of my favorite teams last year, and they we damn near got the AAC uh, future ticket on them as well too, which was plus seven fifty. So SMU, I know that they were they got a sort of a new uh, group here, but they always have the offense that's able to put up a high amount of points. And I think today they run rough shed over. Uh, um, Texas State, they 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 overwhelm them. This winds up being a varsity versus the JV game, maybe varsity versus soft frost game. All right, so there it is, minus 23 and a half, SMU. And then we have Houston Baptist going against UTEP, who is the worst team in the uh, big boy co uh, conferences. They are a Conference USA team, and they went 1-11 last year, and I think this was one of the games. This might have been the only game that they won last year. I can't remember, but I know that they can cover. That's one thing about UTEP. UTEP won't win the game, but they can cover. So I do think that today UTEP kind of plays the game to where they're saying, oh, well, you know, they're not not as good as we are, and they play in the FCS, so we should have a chance today. And usually, they still wind up having a game where it's going to be a game. So this plus 25 might be one that you can annihilate the window on. So Houston Baptist, I know it's tough because you look at the name and say, come on, Pop, it's Houston Baptist. But still, it's UTEP, and they went 1-11 last season. I don't see any improvement coming from that team yet. All right, and then you got Arkansas State and Memphis. This is lightweight. Uh, this is somewhat of a um, 
rivalry game. You know that these teams have played each other several times, a lot of times. And um, over 73, Arkansas State scores. And we all know Memphis's offense is designed to throw 70, 80 points on the board. So I'm not worried about this game going over 73 points. I know it's a high total, but it's a high total for a reason because we all know Memphis can put the 70 on the board by themselves. So pretty much there it is, Arkansas State over 73 Memphis, Arkansas State, let's get it. We playing, we scoreboard watching. And this, oh, my bad. Houston's playing North Texas. I'm so sorry about that. And they were a bit better than, they had a better record than North Texas last season. So they were 4-8. and UTEP's playing against Stephen F. Austin, but it's still the same it's the, still the same deal. It's still another Conference USA team. You know, North Texas is a Conference USA team as well, too. And honestly, you, they're, they're, well, North Texas is okay. So, you know, pretty much that game right there, though, I still don't trust them, though, to cover in that game. But still, the this game right here could be another dog bet for you if you can get the dog bet or you guys can take the spread because UTEP's playing against Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin won three games. They won one. So pretty much with this, I think what we can do here is just take the under 54 and a half. I don't see a whole lot of scoring in this game. I see a whole lot of just uh, bad plays and just follies happening in this bad boy. So there it is, under 54 and a half. And we got ourselves a 64 to 1 ticket. And I'm going to tell you guys like this uh, the last five years, I think there's only been one year where we haven't hit the opening day ticket. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but it's always pretty good to be betting these tickets the first few weeks of the uh, season as well, or any week of the season. But we move on. And now it's time to talk about the NBA playoffs. All right? I told y'all, I'm trying to do y'all a favor. I'm trying to make sure everybody gets in here, gets they, gets they notes down. But then we go to the main event last because I was using the NBA way too early. So here we are, NBA playoff bets, Celtics first half. Let's go ahead and get it. I think that everybody's going to have this idea that the Raptors are going to come out um like a man on fire and everything like that, but I doubt it. I think the Celtics, uh, that was a big, big gut check for the Celtics right there. That was a reality check as well, too, because if they don't seize the moment today, then this series is going 2-2, and it's going back into the favor of the Raptors as well, too, because when it comes down to the grit and grind of things, I trust the Raptors a little bit more. But when it comes to the talent and the excitement for things, I like Boston a lot. And I, I'm now the more and more I think about it, and shout out to my dude because he called that before anybody else. He said Celtics Heat Eastern Conference Finals, and I said blasphemy that day. So I'm sorry. You was right because it looks very likely that this is going to happen. And when I think about it, it's a much better series for TV. Come on, everybody be bored up there watching the Bucks and Raptors again with no Kawhi. Come on, but Celtics and Heat, these teams have won titles in the last 15 years. So, so it's it's a bit of a better it's a it's a better draw. That's all I'm saying. They got young, exciting players on each side. They got Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum. So it should be fun. But let's not skip ahead that far. But I still think the Celtics are good for the first half. Okay. Now, if they wind up losing the game, it is what it is. It's 2-2. Then we go into game five. But this series does honestly have seven written all over it. But for Boston to truly win the series, in my opinion, they got to win it in six or five. It's that simple. They can't get to a game seven because that plays into the favor of the Raptors. All right, so with that, this series, the first three games all went under. I'm feeling like this game will be the over game here um, because I think both these boys are going to go at it. Their defenses, they've pretty much figured out what to how to attack their, their defenses as well, too. So over 214, I like it. Let's see how it shakes out. All right, we move on, and here goes the dog of the day in the NBA. I ain't had one all week. But you know what? Since they keep having these top seeds get popped and everybody was just so in love with the Clippers after what they did to the Nuggets, a tired team that literally quit in the fourth quarter. But you know what? They said to themselves, you know what? Live to fight another day, bro. We'll be back on Saturday. We'll be fully rested. We'll be ready to roll. We figured some things out. We'll go from there. But one thing that they're going to have to do, though, is they're going to have to figure out a way to get Jokic to really, really toughen up a bit because Zuby was up there not having it with them. And so pretty much they going he gonna have to go to war and he gonna have to make sure Zuby get in foul trouble because he the all-star here. 
And that's what we, they usually favor the All Star in matchups like that. So I think Jokic is up for a big one tonight, and I think Jamal Murray is going to make his way back to uh, the the spotlight tonight as well too. I think he has a huge game to be uh, honest with you guys. But we know Kawhi is there, we know Paul George is there, and it's good to have Pat Beverly back as well too because he's out there anchoring the defense fairly well. And you know the Clippers just had a good game because everybody family showed up, and you know they've been having a good time this weekend they they went about things a little bit smarter than the lakers so pretty much it is what it is and i'm taking the nuggets plus 340 i know it sounds crazy but see me at the end of the night when we cash in that big boy ticket all right so we move on and we got the first half over 113 i think this is a slam dunk throw to throw alley-oop off the backboard type of play man this one should be money for us right here over 113 both these teams are going to put push the uh push the pace and um i think we're gonna wind up uh getting this one home over 113 nuggets clippers first half j trev man why you do me like that hey it is what it is it's just opinions but then at the end of the night y'all come see me when the nuggets get that win all right so there it is now we're gonna start with the uh delmar first all right delmar primetime bets Late pick for best value, maiden special weight, 55k. Isn't she lovely? I'm telling you, um, this is a this is an into mischief uh baby right here. This is a two-year-old race as well. So I like it. Gimme Isn't She Lovely, the seven horse, seven five four three box it, um, three four five seven, and you can key it seven three four five all right we move on to the john c maybe stakes and that's 150k not uh mile and uh one eighth on the um turf and we got lady prance a lot and this horse looks really good going into the race so i'm gonna go ahead and circle lady prance a lot to win this one and um we, we're going two eight four seven we can box it up two four seven eight and then we can also go ahead and um you know, go from there and you know, move along. And then we got our nightcap horse, who is the uh, shot of the day as well, too. Mongolian legend. Um, this horse, we're going to box him up two, four, six, seven, eight. And uh, super high five as well, too. The super high five carried over yesterday. But we hit a monster uh, super factor yesterday. I couldn't get the super high five bet in on, in on time. But I did hand it out, and it actually did hit. But, dude, we hit a monster exacta, a monster trifecta, because all the horses that I listed had came in. So, pretty much, you guys got to jump on it, bro. You got to jump on it. Um, so, pretty much, we move on, and we have the 50 cent late pick for it. Races 8 through 11. I'm going to go with the 3, 6, 8, 9, the 2, 4, the 2, 8, the 2, 4, 6, 8. And this is going to be a $32 ticket, okay? Now, let's go ahead and talk about the Kentucky Derby. And at the Kentucky Derby, we got ourselves one of the best Kentucky Derbies to ever not be seen by the public. This is going to be a non-public affair, but still, there's money in the air. So there's going to be people watching this and watching it intently as well, too. So I look very forward to watching uh, the races today. So you guys be on the lookout for that. Um, so pretty much in the Kentucky Derby, let me hurry up because my phone's about to die as well, too. I'm going to roll with the horse by the name of Honor AP. He's going to be ridden by Money Mike Smith, and he's going to have, uh, and he's trained by John Sharice. And John Sharice is the famous trainer of Zenyatta, the, uh, lady horse that used to take on the boys and really, whoop, and really, really whoop them. One of the greatest race horses you'll ever see. And, um, pretty much this could be another great story for that trainer and for John and for, uh, Mike as well, too, who did rock I justify to uh, the Triple Crown, but this isn't a Triple Crown situation. The Kentucky Derby is the jewel of the Triple Crown. So winning the uh, Kentucky Derby kid is almost bigger, is big, just as big as winning the Triple Crown. So I know we're in a bad spot, number 16, but let's go ahead and we're going to take Honor AP. And Honor AP should be... Um, uh, walking with the roses, man. I'm telling you, everybody's on tis the law, but I don't see a favorite that cheap winning the uh, Kentucky Derby. I've never seen any uh, Kentucky Derby with a three to five. He isn't Secretariat. He isn't uh, a American Pharaoh. He isn't Justified. He's a pretty damn good horse, but Honor AP can catch him because he was the flavor of the week before anybody else. So I'm rolling 16, 17, 18, 4, 7. Okay, you guys can box that up. I suggest you box it up, and we can hit ourselves a big fat super factor today 
or hit ourselves a nice super high five or exactly trifecta. And then with my long shot back today, I was going to put this horse as our key horse. But I'm going to bet this horse as well, too. And I really do like this horse a lot. This was the two-year-old champion, Storm the Court, trained by Peter Erton. Okay, and um, this horse is um, has beaten all as knows these horses. He knows them well, and he's ran well in his last few races. He's well traveled as well too. And I think today it's his, I think he's in his season right now. So I have him maybe getting us a big long shot bet today. He's not, you know, pretty much. I, He's, I can't put him as the number one horse here because, you know, he's 50 to one. But at the end of the day, though, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and I'll take this bet. And um, we go 20 across the board on a 50 to one. Hopefully uh, we get at least get you to show because if we show, we we probably make the most money out the um, placing. So it is with that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and wrap this bad boy up. If you guys do need a book today, there is a lot of betting going on, but some people don't have books. So if you do need a book today, go ahead and uh, go to mybookie.ag. Go ahead and put in the promo code POP. You will receive up to $1,000 in a deposit bonus. Once again, put in the promo code POP at mybookie.ag. Receive up to $1,000 in a deposit bonus. And pretty much, once again, the show has been brought to you by Prime Wave Media uh by the Prime Wave Media Group, and this is the premier sports betting show with the one and only Pop DiBiase, the primetime capper. And I'll be right back at you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time. You guys can follow me on the Twitter at Pop DiBiase, and you guys can follow the YouTube channel that shows the show daily, and it's going to be um, the Prime Wave uh, YouTube channel, okay? So you guys be good, and I'll be back to you tomorrow, and I'll be over here putting out snippets and putting out uh, tickets all day on the horses as well, too, and just doing my normal commentary. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I hope you're feeling the same. I'll be back to you tomorrow, and you guys are the absolute best. All right, so I'm on my way out, and I am gone.